have limited ranks of countries with special conventional weapons, which could bring total deterrence against any military aggression. There is one specific weapon, which has exceptional potentials to make it indefensible. And that is the newest level of missile technology humans have ever reached, the hypersonic. But is it really that special? So China have it, Russia have it, days ago France unveiled it, US claim to have but no one has seen it, India is also developing its own missile with help of Russia. But now Iran has joined the club. Specifications of all these hypersonic missiles are different and unique, though they all have some mutual features. Here is what we know. Hypersonic missiles are projectiles that can move at speed of at least Mach 5 or 5 times the speed of sound. That is roughly 1.7 kilometers per second. Some ballistic missiles already reach these speeds, but these new class of weapons separate themselves from the pack and they can take a more random path to their intended targets after plunging back into the atmosphere. And this makes it far more difficult to be detected by radar systems and to be destroyed by defense shields. So they are literally not deterrable. The way they work is really amazing. Friction from the upper atmosphere produces extremely high temperatures, while the intense speed of the missile produces superheated particles surrounding it that make it harder for radio communications to get through. So far, Russia has been the only country to use them in a combat. Several months after the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran first announced in November that it had a hypersonic missile, now the Fatah missile has been displayed. Iran says the projectile has a range of 1400 kilometers and can move at a massive speed of up to Mach 15 or almost 5 kilometers per second before hitting its target. It means that Fatah could theoretically reach targets in under 7 minutes. It's also said to feature a movable secondary nozzle and employ solid propellants that allow for high maneuverability within and outside the atmosphere, which means no missile defense system in the world is a match for it. Therefore, we can say that this is obviously a generational leap. Firstly, I want to say if Iran as an economically crippled country isolated from the Western Manian technology and plunged in domestic problems, unveiled this missile two years ago, no one could believe it. But now things are totally different. We have seen effectiveness and precision of various Iranian weapons in lots of conflicts around the world. Seeing at least 30 years of tireless efforts by Iranian experts to reach such a milestone makes it special. And even if you don't like the ruling government there, you have to praise them for being so robust and successful in their efforts. What are these missiles capable of? One thing, and that is the key to win the first stage of any conflict. These missiles are very expensive, so you won't want to use them against all military targets. A hypersonic missile can cripple defensive capability of an army by destroying those defensive systems whatever they are, the Iron Dome or the Patriot, then it would be much easier to use fighter jets, drones and ballistic missiles to shoot other targets. There is an interesting fact here. This time, when Iran unveiled this missile, Israeli media were the only one to worry. Arab countries had a different point of view. They did not see it as a threat against themselves. And it means how much the political games have changed in this region since Iran and Saudis agreed to normalize ties. US has always put new sanctions in place against Iran. This is what Washington is capable of. And it means that Western powers have long accepted the bitter reality that they cannot be influential in the West of Asia anymore. And having such a big game changer would help Iran to substantially improve its position as a military superpower in the new world order, which is under construction now. However, I really hope that this missile would never be used in a war. And finally, as always, I really wonder why the Iranian government cares about military stuff more than well-being of its people. Tell me if you know. And thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and to check out other videos on this channel.